Welcome back. Uh, today's segment is brought to you by the letter R for Reichenbach and the number five for reasons we'll see in a minute. And Reichenbach being the pioneer of philosophy and science in the last century. Um, and number five being, we'll take a look. But yeah, when you're playing chess, uh, and players are being assigned a rating based on their performance, uh, turns out that if you have the first move, you have an advantage. Um, so we'll take a quick look at the code, uh, but then also dive into uh, the GitHub issue that spawned this me to work on some of this code. So there's a class in the Lee Chess code base called rating, it has the initial rating at the beginning of a rating period, initial rating deviation at the beginning of the rating period, volatility, etc. So I've added one more constant here that I've called advantage to represent the handicap or advantage that is given to one player over the other because you can't have both players moving first. And so I measure this advantage in terms of a number of rating points. And so I go ahead and implement Glickman's suggestion of uh, when we're about to do a rating calculation, uh, account for the advantage as part of the rating. Um, made this private because this uh, particular function is not something, this is more likely to cause a headache than cause anything helpful. It is consumed once, and we'll take a look at where it is consumed. Um, actually, <laughs> we don't have to uh, see it what consumes the consumer of that, though. Um, in the Leach's rating calculation algorithm, uh, there's at most one game per rating period, uh, or at least one result per rating computation. That is, every time a game finishes, a rating is computed, and the rating list is never recomputed from a list of ratings that has more than one result, or a more list of more than one result. Um, and the result includes uh, the opponent's rating and the outcome, um, win, loss, or draw. So I changed this number of maximum iterations for, uh, well, I don't know if we're actually going to see this appear in the diff or not. I believe it's step five of Glickman's algorithm where it takes everybody's rating and attempts to approximate a new rating for this player uh, based on this player and their outcomes. And so that's not done, I don't think it's done in this estimation phase. But yeah, take a look at Glickman's paper and you'll see where there's a function called e in his paper and that function e is also represented in this uh, code that had been originally authored by um, Jeremy Gooch. Uh, you can find Jeremy Gooch on um, LinkedIn if you want more information about him and what he's been up to. Uh, he was so kind as to provide this um, source code that I believe was GPL licensed and you'll find license.txt bundled with his code wherever it is uh, promoted to. Uh, but yeah, Jeremy Gooch was kind enough to take Glickman's efforts and uh, convert them into Java code. Other people have converted this into other languages. Uh, but Jeremy Gooch had written this in Java, and I'm improving this to take advantage of some factor in Glico Boost. And finally, I've rambled long enough, but uh, in the Leechess code base, there's a class called Perfs Updater. And this class um, uh, has a function that called update ratings given white's rating, black's rating, and the outcome in the form of a glico result, a win-loss, or a draw. In the event of a draw, um, white had started the game with a 5-point rating advantage, or a 10-point rating advantage because they went first, so they get a 5-point handicap. 
black gets a five point deficit. So black should get more than 50% credit for a draw. Uh, in the event of a win, white claims the full win, but based on having a higher rating to start with and based on facing an opponent's lower rating because white went first. And so this is what I mean by the number five and this kind of advantage. Um, and we'll take a look at where this plus five minus five comes from in a second. Uh, I just didn't want to make my code change too confusing because it will spark some debate, even though it shouldn't. Um, oh, but yeah, so I mentioned the plus five and the minus five. I did not really talk about this 3,000, 1,000 change. So my point is that during the calculus based on the Illinois algorithm to determine the delta and mu and epsilon and all those special values, um, that calculus based on a single game result should not take a thousand iterations. Even in Glickman's paper, it takes at most 19 based on 10,000 samples. So if it's taking more than a thousand iterations uh, to do your integral based math, something's not right. Um, really, this should be much closer to like 10. There's no way that based on a single outcome it should take so many iterations. But anyway, I added that in to try to add some type safety to the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, and my message there, Glico 2 converges within a thousand iterations or something's wrong. As described in the Glico paper with 15 games per rating period, the mean iteration of the Illinois algorithm, etc. is quick. Again, reference Glickman's paper if you're curious for the details. Um, so this code patch is to try to address um, an issue that I have brought before the Lee Chess team, and they were kind enough to document for me last year, that Glico Boost uh, has recommended this improvements, uh, this improvement to uh, the original Glico 2 algorithm. Uh, this is recommended by, I believe, Harvard professor Mark Glickman, a statistician who's uh, well trusted by the US Chess Federation as well as chess.com. Um, and yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, certainly his work uh, is well acknowledged. I mean, I had this idea separately that, like, white goes first, so obviously you want to account for this in the rating thing, but uh, he actually formalized what does it mean. And what it means is you account for, like, white doesn't get as many rating points for win. Um, it's that simple. Um, uh, so the way he formalized it in his paper is said that um, when you're determining the expected value, white's expected to win more than 50% of the time. And so I counted for that my own way, with that plus 5, minus 5. And my plus 5, minus 5 are based upon uh, Nicholas uh, actually doing some uh, experimentation here, um, where he gave white and black uh, different rating bonuses, deficits, whatever, and um, measured a number of metrics, uh, and we'll take a look. Um, this is attempting to present a summary of this, but White actually scores 51.6% in a sample of 5 million rated standard games. So this corresponds to an expected score with a 11 point rating advantage. So note that my patch doesn't even give the full 11 point rating advantage. I'm trying to avoid controversy. So I'm giving less than that rating point advantage. Uh, we could always tune that at whatever phase we think appropriate. But if you give white an extra five rating points and black at minus five at the beginning of the calculation step, um, that counts for 10 out of the 11. And so, yeah, somewhere around here, I don't know. 
This is a measure of the fitness function based on um, how much of a rating advantage we've given to white. And so I think somewhere out here is like if we've given uh, a bonus of zero to white and here if you've given a bonus of I guess 20 or something um, at some point you hit the sweet spot where the rating formula algorithm is able to accurately predict outcomes of future games uh, based on some machine learning and resampling and such. Um, and so this, these are all measures of the fitness function. And um, yeah, there's also cosmetically like, okay, if we were to make such a rating change and give white a bonus and give, uh, or if we were to give white less credit for having won when going first, cosmetically, um, what this would mean is that one player in this sample of so many millions of games would have 22.82 fewer rating points than they currently benefit from. And I took a look at this player's Lee Chess profile afterward, and they've actually closed their account. So make of that what you will. Um, but yeah, so what this says is that with this, um, that player would not have had the 22.82 rating points that at the time they enjoyed. Um, so yeah, here is Niklas' work at my suggestion and Glickman's suggestion. Um, Glickman through his papers, I through repeatedly begging uh, someone on Leeches to look at this, and Niklas was ever so kind and generous as to do this research. Uh, benefiting from previous work done for the Kaggle uh, data learning mining challenge. Um, so yeah, here's the data set. Um, there's 5 million games with some outcomes in there. And we group the time controls the same way as on the Lee Chess website with blitz and bullet correspondence, etc. being different categories. And then borrowing, um, uh, where was that? Oh, here's Glico 2, really trivial implementation thereof. Um, so that performs the traditional Glico 2 math. And then we add one parameter in there to estimate what if white had a uh, 11 point rating advantage uh, just because they go first. Um, and so, yeah, this is what we end up with is that, um, hang on, let me actually try to read this. So here's the Glico 2 fitness function. Um, where are our results linked into this pandas based research? Let's see. So this is saying for a certain player, uh, given that 5 million game database sample, um, at the end of that period, they would have ended up with a rating deviation of 110 and a rating of 1500. And if we calculated this player's rating a bit differently, um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Based on a small sample of games, rating deviation doesn't particularly matter. Um, let's see. Yeah, what is, how do I read this again? Oh, I'm sorry. If we're just counting results of the white player, white tends to win this often and white tends to lose this often. So they have a win rate of about 51 and a half percent, um, which, uh, if you look at the U S chess federation's website, and you're saying, I want to estimate this player playing against that player. You can figure out, based on ELO or Glico or any formula you wish, that a 51.5 uh, win rate 
comes out to about an 11 point rating advantage. Um, really, no matter what formula you use. And then based on that, you're able to look at the Kaggle challenge, which is where it asked for people to submit um, algorithms to predict future game outcomes based on a sample of game outcomes. And that's an exciting academic challenge, and they provided an evaluation metric that judged just how good your rating system is. And so we're applying this same metric to Glico 2 versus the modified Glico 2, where, um, anyway, let's see. So the deviance based on wrong prediction, if you... <laughs> You can have a maximum deviance of about two if you're predicting a win, you encounter a loss in one result. Um, if you have, uh, if you're predicting a draw and a loss occurs or something like this, um, deviance is considerably less. And uh, with a correct prediction, deviance is minimal. So. Um, then we can get the aggregate deviance across all of the measurements and all of everything. Anyway, the key point is that if you try various values for a first move advantage, the one that um, minimizes the deviance from correct predictions uh, comes out to an 11 point rating difference. Um, or an 11 point rating advantage for white. Um, and so then we're able to run, yeah, and then this was shared, this screenshot. Anyway, so yeah, if you'd assume that there is no advantage for the first player, you get a deviance of about 27% with the given data set that we have. Um, and based on yeah, tuning this, you can get a slightly better version of 27%. Um, again, based on a data set of 5 million outcomes. Um, and it's possible this data set could evolve over time. We could rerun the experiment with a newer set of data if we so cared. But uh, anyway, we figured out that if you assert a or assume a default advantage here of uh, 11 points for the first move, this is more or less what you end up with. Um, I'm actually curious, you could break this down further by opening, I'm sure. Although as I'm sure some players have a preference for certain openings, so that kind of muddies the waters. But if you were to go look at tournaments, where players did not get to select the openings, but the openings were selected on the player's behalf. You could measure just how good the king's gambit is. You could measure how good the queen's gambit is. You could measure any opening you so cared to measure and see um, in aggregate how good is this opening for the players that are playing in these tournaments. And that's not to say how good the opening is in some objective sense of the word, but just to say, like, based on these players playing games, how good do we think this opening is? Now, you could also apply that same science to professional games, and you could even have statisticians running samples like this, trying to figure out how pretty accurate the rating system predictions are. But more likely what this would be for would be if some top-level professional was asking which openings should I study for the tournament I'm about to play in. Now, chances are the professional would know, the coach would know, everybody would know what the openings are that all these players are playing, but if you mathematically wanted to decide which thing is most likely to improve your chances of winning this tournament with these players in the tournament, you could run some science like this. It's all open source. Um, so again, this Kaggle challenge, all these uh, Glico resources and PyGlico2 library and so forth are all freely available in open source. This sort of, um, yeah, and then there's the Kaggle challenge and 
I'm sure there's plenty of documentation here on Kaggle as well. If not, doubtless you'll be able to find more resources about it. Um, or, I don't know, join the Lee Chess Discord or something. Have somebody sort you out. Um, but, yeah, there's a leaderboard explaining all the various um, attempts at improving performance. Um, yeah. And, yeah, this improvement in prediction of the, the improve, the, the improvement to the rating system to be able to predict future game outcomes. This improvement to the rating system is significant. It's not just some academic thing. This is something like every chess player knows about that you perform better with the white pieces. This is something that has been complained about um, in the form of masters can draw at will, um, which presumes that if a master is given the white pieces, he will just draw a game if he sees fit to. Um, it's perhaps overstating the case, but like these, this grudge, this notion that white has an advantage is well acknowledged by everyone. Every strong tournament player is aware of this. Um, regardless, the U.S. chess rating system and the international rating system do not account for this. Um, nor, I don't think the universal chess rating system, URS, I don't think accounts for it either. And maybe sometime in the future they'll figure it out, but... Um, probably matters more for the 99% of players who aren't in the professional circuit who are trying to eke their way up to uh, FIDE master or US chess master or master in their respective national organizations. They probably care more about this than some professional, unless the professional is trying to eke their rating up so they can get invited to tournaments. But anyway, um, yeah, this notion that... Um, white going first uh, as an advantage is tremendously well known um, and so acknowledging that in the rating system improves the measurement of can we predict future game outcomes based on previous outcomes um, yeah this predictability accuracy of the rating system improves if you assert an 11 point advantage for white and so then after all that got measured well there are some players who are stronger with black this is tricky some players really master playing the opening with black and might not be so confident in playing with the white pieces i count myself in that category too Although lately I've had slightly better performances than normal for myself with the white pieces, but that's separate. Overall, I've struggled quite a bit uh, opening with the white pieces, and I tend to react better with the black pieces. But um, So this is a bit tricky, despite the fact that there's an advantage to playing the white pieces. Some players will perform better with the black pieces. It's just how things are if things are complicated um that doesn't change the fact for for almost all players they perform better with the white pieces but there are some who don't and so this proposed rating change could potentially make it easier for players who get the black pieces to perform even better and get stronger ratings and then just elect to not to use the white pieces or something i don't know it's complicated, but this, regardless, is a change that improves the accuracy of the rating system as a whole. This change needs to be made. Um, so it's just a question of how to make it. And then maybe you could also use this as some sort of training tool to help players acknowledge um, where in their opening study they need to focus next to improve the rating overall instead of just memorizing white openings all day um, studying black openings or certain openings might be useful against certain opponents 
Um, it's a lot of analysis work to come to conclusions like this, but, and I'm not explaining this particularly well. Um, is there anything that's obviously standing out in this research, I wonder? Um, yeah, there's just some histograms of various aggregates of data. I admit I'm, I'd have to take a closer look, but there's some measure of does a player perform better with white or black or something like this. Um, so you can look at the difference between old and new predictions, uh, and prediction being the rating itself. The rating itself is just a prediction of the player's strength based on past performances. It's not actually uh, some perfect measure of their strength. It's just an estimate of how do we think they'll perform the next time based on all their past performances. Um, so, yeah, with this change in place, um, this would not affect many players' ratings at all. It would affect some players' ratings in a positive direction. It would affect some players' ratings in a negative direction. It's roughly what you expect, right? That um, just because white has an advantage doesn't mean that one player is playing white every game. Um, but yeah, you'll see, at least this is not some crazy distribution all over the place of, um, you know, it's also not a uniform distribution saying like some players are going to lose a thousand points and other players are going to gain a thousand. No, we're talking like some really small margin, um, that players are quite vocal about and care strongly about, but, um, yeah. And then we could look at particular players and the impact before and after uh, the rating change. And we could see, like, here's one player, and their rating would have gone from 1562 to 1564 as a result of this change over 125 games. Um, and, yeah, if you do this same experiment for players who have tons of games, um, you'll find also this is, again, not a uniform distribution you notice that this scale down here in terms of i think sigma or delta or something like number of standard deviations uh we're talking practically zero standard deviations in terms of how many rating deviations their rating would be affected whereas if you're looking back here where some players might have only played a couple games um so their rating will be sharply changed uh, if we were to go recompute it, which I don't think we would, I think we'd just put the new system in place, and then future game outcomes would be rated using the new system, I assume. Um, but yeah, if you were to actually update everybody's rating who we've played over 125 games, or 100 games, um, we would find that, yeah, the change to a player's rating is quite minimal. Um as a result of this change, because Leech S does the best it can to balance which colors it assigns to which players when they're playing in tournaments and rating pools and such. Uh, some players will go out of their way to avoid playing with the black pieces, and they will abort dozens of games and get banned by the system because they don't want to play the black pieces because they recognize that white has a rating, uh, rating advantage. Well, no longer. Now you might find some players who prefer playing with the black pieces, and they get paired against opponents who prefer playing with the white pieces, and okay. Seems fair to me. Um, but overall, the system will still try to balance colors. They just Players won't complain as much about it. Um, so yeah, this player who's played 132 games, if they were to have all their games re-rated, uh, all their opponents' games re-rated, etc. Their rating would jump two extra points. And we could look at the difference between the ratings pre and post this kind of uh, reassessment. And some players would stand to lose about 20 rating points if we were to go back and re-rate all the games, which I don't think we're going to do. 
But going forward, if there's some players who have an affinity for playing one color or the other, this would probably affect them more than it would affect anyone else. And um, even if they still continue this very strange color obsession, um, uh, then we're still talking not about a lot of rating points, but we're talking about a system that would discourage players from repeatedly aborting games because now the rating system will be more accurate and it'll acknowledge that white starts with an advantage and so that's fair to white that's fair to black that's fair to everyone and this is something that didn't just affect one class of players or another this is something this very slight advantage that's given to the first player is something that affects all rated games so um, yeah, again, really, really minor change to the rating system, really fundamental change that, a uh, change in attitude. Um, it might actually encourage players to play openings a bit differently too. If white, um, I don't know, like black might be more amenable to a draw or something. I don't know. White might play more aggressively to try to uh, capitalize on the fact that they get to move first. Um, or you might find some players who just continue to play defensively with the white pieces because you can't really do anything about this situation, right? I mean, moving first gives you an advantage. It's only fair that the rating system recognize that. So I've been suggesting this quite a while. Glickman agrees um, with his paper about Glico Boost. This is one of the improvements that was made, and I believe this is something that players need to be mature about and agree upon, that uh, going first gives you some advantage, however slight, and it does affect ratings. So um, it's good to be mature. I've submitted a patch to try to improve the Lee Chess code codebase I hope any of this science makes sense, and if there are questions, of course, um, I'll be in the Lee Chess Discord to try to discuss them.